City Camp is VBS on steroids. I first started City Camp at the end of first grade. I've been part of City Camp since the beginning. I've been coming to City Camp for the past six years. We get to learn a lot about the Bible and Jesus. The community is um, really comforting. You get to do fun things like maybe crafts, painting. It brought me closer to God. What I want for these kids is to have a positive experience so that when they go back later in life, they can say, those people at that camp, those Jesus people, they loved me. And that is the message that we are supposed to be spreading around the world. Our God is the God of all peoples. He has created people of all races, all colors. The diversity of city camp is one of the first things that really strikes you. We just have families from every conceivable sort of background, which is a little bit different than it is in Columbia, South Carolina. So many different perspectives, so many different cultures and things like that, that has really changed the way that I think about the world and what people need to see Jesus. Three years ago, New York Real Estate Magazine named Sunnyside, Queens, the most diverse neighborhood in all of New York City. And that's saying something because statistics show that anywhere between 130, 150 languages are spoken in Queens. We're considered the most diverse neighborhood in probably the most diverse metropolitan area in the world. If you're looking for a cross-cultural experience to minister the gospel to an unchurched neighborhood, there can be no better place than Sunnyside in my opinion. One thing that we have found is because there's such a high immigrant population, most adults in the household work. And so you can imagine that during the summertime it becomes problematic, especially for an immigrant, trying to learn a new language, a new culture. School's out, what do you do with your kids? We find that a lot of parents are scrambling. We've also found in a lot of cases, children are actually being sent back to their home country for the summer. And so what we're doing is we're providing a ministry to the families of Sunnyside from nine to three the parents know that their children are in good hands. We get about 80 kids and we feed them breakfast, we feed them lunch. We make the lunches from scratch, me and my team in the kitchen, and uh, they have a snack. We use songs, we use skits, we use dance. We do an art project each day, a different one. We'll use watercolor one day, acrylic paints another day. It's basically just having fun, teaching them the good news, the gospel. Every program in the neighborhood is costly, somewhere above the $200. We charge $20 and then the rest we provide. This past summer we did it for three weeks. Our vision is to provide city camp every week for the whole summer. We can't do this on our own. We're not a big church. And so we're looking for partners. Every week we have camp. There is a new group of teachers. They do their research and they know what they're talking about. We've had churches come from Mississippi. We've had churches come from Tennessee, from South Carolina. Our church has focus areas globally. We're focused in, in Haiti, we're focused in Bulgaria, and we're focused in Ukraine. In the last three years, coming to the Sunnyside neighborhood where City Camp is, I've met families from Haiti, I've met families from Bulgaria, I've met families from Ukraine. They come to us. I haven't been to church or read the Bible, but I think I learned a lot when I came here. Just a few years ago, we found that one third of the children had never even heard the name of Jesus before. Um, that is a staggering statistic. To have a child pay attention to the stories that the Bible has to offer, to learn for the first time who is Jesus and why he's here, it's awesome, it's amazing because they're engaged. After the week finished, they all knew who Jesus was and who God was, and they would start building this relationship with them, and they would start becoming this whole new person. And these kids were just excited. They were amazed about God's power throughout Scripture. This camp has helped me open up my faith. God seems like He's closer to me and more real after I've been part of the camp. Two years ago, we had a Muslim family come. The mother asked, can my daughter come but not sit in during the Bible study time? We said, absolutely. The next day she comes back with her teenage daughter, says it's okay for my little daughter to sit in during the Bible study time. Is there anything that my teenage daughter can do to help? By Thursday, the teenage daughter was asking for a Bible. 
They were reading the Bible in their home. These are the opportunities that come out of City Camp. Last year there was a girl who could not participate because she was celebrating Ramadan. And this year she's at camp and she's one of the first kids in my class to learn the Bible verse and she is excited about it and she asks questions about it and it's exciting to see that God is working. Over the years, many people have come in to this camp to help us. We're not just trying to get them through the day, we're actually trying to build a relationship with them. And it shows because in the neighborhood, they'll stop and say hi. Yeah, I like when I see them again. The kids run up to us and they jump on us and love on us and we do the same. And that's really special. You know, now your story is overlapping with somebody else's story. We've had children come back and say, we know we're too old to be campers. Is there anything we can do to help? Last year, we started a counselor and training program. Sixth graders and above, they volunteer. They come back as CITs. I wanted to be a CIT because we get to be campers and we get to help the teacher. And now they're building relationships with kids in the neighborhood that they'll see in school. I see these children as the future leadership in our church. After the last week of city camp this year, I ran into a mom at the grocery store and her teenage daughter was one of the CITs. And the mom said, you know, we're not particularly religious, but our daughter loves being part of your church. Would it be okay if she comes to church by herself? And now she's assimilating into our church. This city camp is changing their lives, it's changing our lives. And I want people from the South and other places to come to this part of New York where you see so many different cultures and peoples. So if you want to know God more, this is where you'll find out. You won't need a visa, you won't need a passport. Get on the plane and come to Queens and you will know so much more about God that you probably would not just by staying in your small town or a bigger city or wherever that you are. This becomes sort of the spearhead of, of the missional aspect of Grace Fellowship Church. City Camp gives us credibility because Sunnyside is watching us in action. They're watching GFC live out what it means to love one's neighbor as we love ourselves. And City Camp demonstrates that we are in fact serious about doing that. I would be sad if they shut the camp because it's basically where we all do our prayers and make a lot of new friends. If city camp didn't exist, some of these kids would never have heard about Jesus. We have already determined that we would like to continue to do this for at least the next three to five years. I would love to see the kids again. <laughs> I will remember them. This will be, you know, have pictures and things like that. Um, it's totally been worth it. I would encourage anyone to get involved in this program. It's necessary for the community. This is an enduring ministry. So it doesn't just happen during the week that you're here. We don't want this to be just a one-time opportunity, but something that can last. If we leave here at the end of the week and all we did was a camp, that's a failure. But if we have shown them the love of Christ and how we live and act and move and interact with them and their families, and then the church has opportunities to follow up, uh, that to me is worth investing in. That's why we keep coming back. Consider partnering with us. One of three ways. First of all, please pray for us. But also consider supporting us financially. We can use your help. We'd love to partner with you. And finally, Send a group of men and women to proclaim the good news, the gospel. Invest your resources in the lives of these children and see the kingdom grow. And then ultimately, at the end of the day, we'll all be in heaven and talking about it. That would be just absolutely, absolutely brilliant. But you need to come here and you need to come with your resources, the skills and gifts and the dollars, and that would be terrific. Help us as we continue to seek to be salt and light here in Sunnyside, Queens.